uh, Brother Will do our Sunday school. We have, for many, many years, we have Sunday school. And uh, he's our Sunday school teacher. So without further ado, I'm going to open us in prayer and then turn it over to him. And I'll see y'all back in church. Father, in Jesus' name, bless each woman and each man here today. May they hear from you through Brother Will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, brother, you're live on television. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to study this morning out of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 44. Let me do something with this Bible. While he, he's uh, going to do that, I would encourage you to uh, pray for us. We're going through... Uh, interim period here. Brother uh, Life, of course, is out of town. He's gone. He's back uh, with family. Uh, he's always done the technical side of it, and so those of us that sort of know what to do or having to sort of know what to do <laughs> to get it running, we've not got the main camera up yet, so we've got a backup here, and Brother Will's going to be back here to, uh, to teach the Sunday school class, which is the most important thing. Okay, brother, go right ahead. Father, this day we do lift our voices to you. First, we thank you for all that salvation freely given to us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you say, Lord, as many as believe, you give us the power to be called the sons of God. I pray, Lord, at this time that you would join with us, teach us, guide us in all truth, open our ears, our eyes, and especially our hearts, Lord, to the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that salvation that's set before each and every one of us. I ask you also, Lord, bless those less fortunate than we are. And thank you, Lord. I want to give a personal thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach the gospel to my children. Bless my son as he will wait, Lord. All these things I pray for in the name of Christ Jesus, the Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 44. I pray that each and every one of you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I, you know, I feel like a child on punishment this morning. Because I'm restricted. I have to stand right here to be on the camera, and I don't care about being on the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're in the spirit, you got to move, you know what I mean? I have to move. But now, I got to stay right here. But I want you to move. I want your spirit to move. I want you to get in line with God. Because the Bible says you can't even communicate with God if you're not in the spirit. If you're still in the flesh, still want to tinkle with a little bit of stuff and mess around with stuff, you ain't got no communication with God. There's a break between you and God. Isaiah chapter 44. God says, Yet, now, dear, O Jacob, when he speaks of Jacob, he's talking to the Jews. My servant, he says, hear my servant. And Israel, whom I have chosen. Now, the Bible teaches us that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God told Abraham, you shall be the father of many nations. And he was the father of the Jews. And God says, when we accept Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. We are adopted into that family of Jews. We become Jews. We're chosen. We're God's chosen people. So this, le this letter is written to us. And Isaiah, I like Isaiah and Paul and the rest of them that write in the Bible because they make sure that you know this ain't something I thought of. They say, thus says the Lord. Not thus says Isaiah, thus says Jeremiah. He says, thus says the Lord. Yet, now here, because God said all, all this time, he ain't paying no attention. If you look back in Isaiah 43, verse 14, God says, thus says the Lord God, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, for your sake, this is why God speaks, for our sake. Because the Bible says he wishes for none to perish, 
That's why God makes a difference in your life, whether you want to or not, because God don't want to see you destroy yourself. And you know when God's talking to you. Every man knows when God's talking to him because he feels convicted about the things that he knows or the things he has done. 44, verse 2. Thus says the Lord that made thee. If you're walking around, breathing air. And you feel this, and inside you feel a third something, which is that spirit. God made you. Because, and God said you are his image. That's three parts to God. That's the Father, that's the Son, and that's the Holy Spirit. And God made man in his image. He gave man a body, a spirit, and a soul. Three parts to man. That is the image of God. Not blonde hand, blue eyes hanging on somebody's wall in their house. Because uh -oh. every house you go in, somebody's going to have a different picture supposed to be of God with blonde hand, blue eyes, and they all look different. He says, we are the image of God. Thus said the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Now, he's not going to help you if you don't ask him. There's some of you dealing with drug addiction. There's some of you dealing with alcoholism. Some of you dealing with all kinds of problems in your life. And you think you can fix them. No, you can't. You can make a bigger mess. How are you going to quit something that you started? <clears throat> you need help. God says, I will help thee. And God don't tell you to go to NA and AA and all these other kind of A's before you come here. God says, come as you are. 22 years ago, I used to sit over in that corner. Half the time, I was blasted out of my mind. But 22 years ago, I got sober. Why? Not because of me, not because of NA or AA, because of God. Amen. Because I came like I was. The fact was that I came. I was chosen. Why? Because I got to stand here and teach the same people that's addicted to the same things I was addicted to. And show you the power of God. What God can do. Amen. God says, I formed thee and I will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezreel, whom I have chosen. Now, who is Jezreel? That's some of you. Some of you watching over the internet now is not, today is not truly a believer. That's Jezreel. That's some sitting in here is not truly a believer. God says, I formed thee, I made thee, and I will help thee. Now, all you got to do to get that help and to know that you are made by God is believe. Believe. Don't go by what somebody else tells you. Or just go for a couple of weeks here, go, go check into a program. Don't go by what somebody else tells you. Go by what that Spirit of God tells you. God says, I will help thee. And that's only one of the promises between Genesis and Revelation. That's only one of the promises. And these promises belong to each and every one of you. There's a reason why we're here today. There's a reason why some of them turn their computer on and stumble upon this program this morning. Because God says, I have chosen thee. God says in his word, there is an appointed time and an appointed day. Today may be the day that God called you. Listen to this promise, verse 3. God says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. God says, I'll call you to listen, but this is water. Jesus told Satan, and he said, he told Jesus, you see that stone right there? Turn it into bread. 
because that was something for he wanted Jesus to lust after. All those things in life, say, turn that in the grave. Say, but I can't just eat that. I can't just have those things that I want. I got to live by the word of God, which is water. God says, I'll make you realize that I'm in your life. I promise you that. I will pour water upon you. Anybody that's thirsty. You know, there's a lot of people got a lot of stuff and things that ain't for them. Hmm? A lot of people got a lot of stuff, a lot of money, and they're still looking for something else. They thirsty because they don't have the word of God in their life. I will pour water upon me, upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground, blessings. God said, I'll open up the doors of heaven and pour so many blessings on you, you won't have nowhere to put it. And believe me, when you find Christ, you can look back in your life and you know where those blessings was. Because I can remember a lot of mess I got into. Back. I look back now and I say, boy, if it wasn't for God, man, I wouldn't have got out of that. I wouldn't have been able to deal with that. Blessings. God also says, not only you, but your seed also. Anyone that you produce out of the loins of your body, all your children, I pour blessings upon them also. Because God says, you find them. This is what God says in his word. You find them. You have a personal relationship with him. And God says, I will bless five generations of those that love me. And curse five generations of those that don't. So even if your parents didn't know anything about God, it could start with you. Personal relationship with God. Now I know that's true. I use, I don't pick on people, I use myself as a testimony. My father traveled around singing the gospel. I saw very little of my father in my life. He, he, he died on his 75th birthday. My grandfather, his father, was a preacher. That's three generations that I've seen. Him, his father, me. I've had a chance to preach to my children. You all know my son's life. And my, my other son, William, I've had a chance to preach to mine and my grandchildren. My grandchildren came over here, two of my grandsons came over here and said, Grandpa, I want to go in there. <laughs> all they want to do is come into church. I want to go in there and sit over there and sing. And if I know what God says in his word, it's true. But you have to believe. Don't count my Christianity and my relationship with God compared to yours. Even if you don't have children or grandchildren that have or a mother and father that know God, it could start with you. It could start with you. Because we have some, you have some families where the mothers are Muslim, or the fathers are Muslim, or they are this or, or that, and, and the child comes out, and God says, I will call mine out. I will call mine out. I separate the sheep from the goats. Therefore, your child could, you could teach your parent. I will pour upon water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessings upon their offspring. Ooh, that's what you know the Bible says in the last days, the young will teach the old. You know that? In the last days, the young will teach the old. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry that my son is gone. Because I'm computer illiterate. Every time I want to do something on my computer, I got to go get him. <laughs> you have, there's a lot of you have children in your seat sitting around playing with, playing with your telephone. And they done got on something that you didn't know nothing about. Then they have to show you how to do it. 
You know there are a lot of children born in the families right now that are worshiping Allah and Buddha, and they walk in the bedroom and find their kid on, on their knees praying. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. The young teaching the old. God's word does not lie. Amen. And they shall spring up among the grass as willows by the watercourses. God says they'll be strong. They'll be strong. And by the young teaching the old, the ones that do find their children worshiping the Lord, they're not going to be able to change their mind. When that child says, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord, they're not going to be able to change their mind. Change that child's mind. God says they shall be strong. One shall say, I am the Lord's. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Say, I'm adopted into the family of God. And another shall swear with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. You know, there is nothing. The Bible tells you, what shall separate us from the love of God? Who shall famine? Shall our family? Shall things that happen to us in our life separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Therefore, sin came with you, man. You know sin can't separate you from the love of God? Because believe me, once you confess <laughs> Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, temptations come in your way. And all those temptations are sin. And even if you fall into those temptations, you can get out of them. Because the Bible teaches you, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. So nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Even if this flesh wants to do fleshly things, God still will love you. Because you believe in his promises, and his promises is anything you ask in my name, shall be given unto you. So if you ask God to forgive you because you slipped and failed, it shall be given unto you. Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel. You know, Isaiah and Jeremiah, they probably knew one another or knew of one another. And they had a hard job. My job is hard. Anybody that preaches the gospel, anybody that lives the word of God, because it's not important that you know the word of God. Satan knows the word of God. Living the word of God. Anybody that knows how to love, anybody that knows how to forgive, those are the laws of God. They had a hard job. Because God had given them a great amount of people to preach to. And them people didn't, didn't want to believe nothing that they had to say. So they made it clear. Thus says the Lord. This ain't what I say. This is what God says. Now you can listen to it or not. This is what God tells me. I don't hold none of you accountable for how you live your Christian life. My job is just to tell you. I can't make you didn't preach. And they had the same problems. And, but they made sure that these people know that they didn't care how they live. They said, this is what God said. Thus says the Lord, King of Israel, and his Redeemer, and Jesus Christ. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and that Word became flesh. Jesus Christ. So this is what God says and his Redeemer that hung on that cross to redeem all of us from our sins. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me beside me there is no God. 
Now, you will read in your Bible many scriptures that talks about God. Because anything a man worships, that's his God. But when you read about the Almighty in the Bible, it's always with a capital G. All the other gods are talking about because God says there's other gods. Because God even makes that clear. God says, I am a jealous God. But here he said, besides me, there is no other. And he lets you know, I'll let you worship money. I'll let you worship Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, <laughs> President Obama, anybody you want to worship. But in the end, the Redeemer and God, every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your Redeemer. And beside me there is no God. And who, as I, shall call and declare? Which God is going to stand up here beside me and say he's God? God says, which God is going to stand here beside me and tell me he's God? The Bible says in the beginning, who was there to teach God? Who was there to teach God? And who, as I shall call and declare it and set it in order for me, who's going to tell me what to do? Or what I should be doing? This is what God says. And who's going to tell you what's going to happen to you? You know, Allah tell you, go out here and blow yourself up with a IUD or blow up 500 people and you have 700 virgins when you get to heaven. Tell me what a dead man going to do with it. <laughs> what you going to do with it? When, the Bible, when my Bible teaches me, when we get to heaven, there is no census. We're all as angels of God. Why would God need a male and a female in heaven? He don't need us. God can go forth on the earth and populate. In heaven, everybody that's going to be there is already going to be there. God ain't going to need you making no babies in heaven. <laughs> and I think we'll all know each other. And we'll all be glad that we see each other in heaven and that we were a part of each other's lives and a part of each other's salvation. We'll be glad of that. But as far as you thinking that I'm going to have, boy, I'm going to have these 70 virgins with me. Boy, you something wrong with you. <laughs> you ain't got them down here. What makes you think you're going to give them up there? <laughs> down here, you can enjoy them. Up there, you ain't going to be doing that. You're going to be too busy worshiping God Amen. and ruling nations. Because the Bible teaches us we are kings and queens and princes. Since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let your God come and show me what's going to happen. God says, when I brought them people out of Israel, out of Egypt, I told them people what's going to happen to them. I specifically told them what was going to happen to them if they walked away from me. Now, who else can do that? Who else can do that? When the Word became flesh, the Word was on earth, walking around with man, and the Word told man what he was going to do to him. Jesus told him, you're going to kill me. Put me in the ground for three days, and after three days, I'm coming out the ground. Jesus told them that. And they didn't believe it until after it happened. God said, who else can tell you? Verse 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time and declared it, 
you are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? There is no God. If it is, I don't know what it is. This is what God says. Have I told you from the beginning that I was calling you? Yes, God told you that. From the beginning, God says, he knows how many drinks you had to have, how much dope you had to do, how much being crucified and kicked by people you had to do before you called out on them. God says your day was appointed. If there's another God that told you that, God said, I don't know. <laughs> if there's not any, I don't know nothing about it. They that make graven image, are all of them useless? People that work to worship money, ain't they useless? Huh? People that want to stack pile upon pile, they're useless. Tell me how many of you have seen a great truck, armored truck, going to the graveyard to bury somebody's money with? It? <laughs> they can give as much money as they want, they take it with them. They can worship it in all food their life, and they ain't taking none of it with them. No story in heaven. Huh? No story in heaven. Even if they put it in the ground, what is it going to do? Right? <laughs> and their delectable things shall not profit. Oh, you got so many vain people in this world. I'm a naturalist. Now, I'm not trying to crucify any of you ladies or you men that want to put on all kinds of stuff that look good. But I'm a naturalist. The same way I go to bed with my wife or my woman, I want to wake up with her. We don't wake up. That is what beauty is. And if a man looks at that, he's vain already. Or how big she is or how little she is, that's vanity. What's there? What's there? Delectable things, things that you want to look at and look at them because they look good. God said, they don't profit nothing. Because right. I can walk down the street and see the most beautiful woman in the world that I ever seen in my life. And the minute she opened her mouth, she could cut my throat with her words. And then I could take somebody that don't look like something because they could say the most beautiful thing you ever heard in your life. Because it's not delectable. It's not something that I'm looking at for beauty. It's something I'm looking at as you what they say. God says these things are useless. And they are their own witnesses. They are not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Because I guarantee you there's a lot of people that have not looked at the heart of men or the heart of women that have looked at the outer being. Right. And after a while, they're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's for their own shame. This is what God says. It's to their own shame. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are men. Let them all be gathered together, and let them stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. Now, in this chapter, God talks about idolatry. God talks about what a man makes and makes it look pretty to him. And then that man gets so busy looking at that thing that he worships that thing. And he forgets about God. In this chapter, God says, I'm all going to go through it kind of fast. God says, a man, show you how stupid a man is. A man will take a little bitty seed 
and he'll plant it in the ground. And for 20 years, he'll water that seed. And that seed will grow up to be a big tree. And then he'll chop that tree down, and he'll have all the pieces falling on the side, and he'll make himself a god, a totem pole, or whoever. And he'll worship that. And with all of the chips that fall off the tree, he'll take it and he'll warm himself in the fire. And he'll cook his food on it. And he'll still be worshiping that. He said, but you wait till that fire goes out. That man gonna chop his god down and throw him in a tomb. That man's a fool. That man is a fool. The smith with the tongs both work with, in the coals and fashion it with hammers and work it with the strength of his arms. And he is hungry and his strength fails and he drink no water. He don't pay no attention to what God saying. He's too busy working on his God, working on what he thinks is his God. <laughs> work so hard till he lose all his strength and he's thirsty. He's not drinking any of this. Because anything you work, you worship it, get to this. And it's going to take that away. It's going to take that away. The Bible teaches us about not being unequally yoked. Now, there are some people who know that God is in their life. They know when God says, come and let us reason together. They know when God is calling them to prayer. They know when God is calling them to church. But they're unequally yoked. They got a wife or a husband land, or a girlfriend laying beside them that don't want them to go to church. Or oh, what you going to church today for? You went last week. Or what you going on Wednesday night for? You went Sunday. <laughs> Who do you worship? Them or God? God? Who are you going to obey? Them or God? God. Start worshiping them and there's less water you're going to drink. That's right. thirst you're going to be in your life. The carpenter stretched out his broom and marked it with a line. He fitted it with plans. He smoothed it out. He marked it out with a compass and make it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, according to what he thinks his God should look like. Blonde hand, blue eyes on a picture hanging on a wall. <laughs> that it should remain in his house. He chopped down a tree which he had made strong himself in the forest. He planted with he planted an ash and the rain did nourish it, nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn. Then he throws some of his God on the fire to burn. And he warms himself and he bakes his bread. And he makes a God and he worships him. He makes it a graven image and fall down to worship <coughs> what he has made. Well, there's some people today, y'all. I, I listen to these politicians, but boy, they tell me I do. None of them. You know, I got I got my voting rights back since since I got out of prison and all this stuff. You know, I got expunged, got no record expunged and everything, and I've been serving the Lord. And, but this election, <laughs> <laughs> and none of them were voted for. I spoke about it in the kitchen this morning. What's the difference between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton? Hmm? They both wear pants. They both wear pants. <laughs> they both got the same hairdo, and they both got a fork tongue. Both of them lie out of both sides of their mouth. Yes. So what's the yes. difference? But you got to vote. I don't have to vote for either one of them. 
I don't have to vote for either one. I'm going to vote for Pastor Drake. There we go. I don't feel like my vote is wasted. Even if he ain't going to win, I'm going to vote for Pastor Drake. Amen. Now you vote for who you want to vote for. Because I guarantee you, whoever wins, they ain't going to be there before you know when. I guarantee you, they're not going to be there before four years anyway. God is going to separate the sheep from the goats. I don't care what they do to it. Politicians, I don't care what none of them do. Those are not the laws I follow. I follow the laws of God, and they laws can't be held against me. I don't need not one of them. I don't need Trump. I don't need Obama. I don't need none of them to do nothing for me. They can't do anything. I got two hands, two feet, and a big mouth. <laughs> if I can't walk to it and talk for it, I, I take it, then it don't belong to me. You understand what I'm saying? And I, don't, I ain't gonna stick my hand out for him and give it to me. I'm an able-bodied human being. My knees might have calluses on it for praying. Because <laughs> God is the only one can do something for me. God is the only one can do something for you. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. And God says we're to be salt of this earth. We're to give this earth flavor. Let them know that we're here. That's about it. And, and, and believe me, I tell every one of them when they're doing something wrong. I wish Obama Hillary Clinton and, and whoever else would sit on this front row and I'll tell them everything that's wrong. I can't make them do it. But I'll tell them what's wrong. That's salt. Give them some flavor. Make them feel good. <clears throat> Verse 15, Isaiah 44. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he would take Thereof and warm himself. He kindled it and baked bread. He make a God and worship it. He make it a graven image and fall down thereto. He burned part thereof in the fire, and part thereof he eat flesh. He roast, roast, and is satisfied. And he say unto himself, Ah, uh, I'm warm. I'm comfortable. I got all the things I need in life. That's what the next president gonna say in the White House. But when hell break out, where's he gonna go? Because all the things that they try to do, they can't do. You know all these politicians say, when, when I get in the White House, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. They can't do nothing without Congress, Amen. without the House. They can't do nothing without them. They can say all the things they want, but they need them too. Liar. <laughs> they run this to, 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 to show you who's the biggest liar. That's all it is. And they swear themselves in office on this Bible. And don't do nothing that this Bible says. Don't do nothing that this Bible says. Now, some of you might say I'm politician bashing. Not at all. I'm gonna tell you, if nobody ever told you this before in your life, you are 100% right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, you are 100% right. The Bible says when they make laws, Follow them. Do them. Do as they say, but don't do like they do. Because they don't obey the law that they write. But the laws of God are much higher than the laws of man. They can put me in jail because I'm telling the truth. That's the law of God. I speak the truth. But they can't stop me. I get in jail and tell the truth. Then they're going to throw me out of there. So what's the difference?
and went to what's left they make of God, even his graven image, and fall down to it and worship it and pray and say unto it, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes, and they cannot see, and their hearts they cannot understand. Paying too much attention to people, to stuff, and to things, and believe me, you're going to be blind. You might be blind to the Word of God. The Word of God tells us to love one another. The Word of God says you cannot be partial and love God. You cannot say I love you because you're a Christian and I don't like him because I know what he do. You cannot do that in the Word of God. Because Paul says, remember, you was once like them. You was once like them. I want to do for you one more. Put the Bible down. And I'm going to do for you a poem that I wrote way back in the early 90s. And God's been in my life for a long time. I was running, I was jumping. But this point shows love. And show you God was in my life back then. But because God was showing me not to be partial. This point is called the line. Two stood conversing. One was in use of a king. Two said to one. Man, it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining bright and the sky is so clear. But blind to the light, one put on the ear. Which way are you going, two said to one? Down to the park, where I listen to the sound of fun. Upon arrival, one sat down in his day in the usual spot. Two said to one, man without sight. How did you know that that bench was over there? And one replied, you'd be surprised at what I see. Suddenly, one hears a pitter patter of little feet running in his direction. And he says, here she comes now, my best friend. And we love each other. Looking over his shoulder and seeing the face of a black girl. Two surprised him and said to one, Man, you mean to tell me you love her, but she's black. Angrily, one replied, What's that supposed to be? Do you realize in my world of darkness, you are also black? Does that mean I should not love you also? And I thought, I was. That's love. That's love. That's the way God looks at each and every one of us. That's the way God expects us to look at each other blindly and see the love that's there. The love that he has for each and every one of us. My personal prayer is that you would have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't let me judge your relationship. Don't let anybody judge your relationship. With God. Everybody stand. I pray God has blessed you in this day. I pray your eyes will open to some things that will help you grow in your relationship. The important thing is that you have one. We live here. We close the prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for the you bring each and every one of us here to your house, Father, to worship you and to learn something from you. We ask you that you bless Will that teaching us your word. Bless to bless our pastor, Father, and be with us today. 
We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you restore upon each and every one of us. We ask you, Father, that you bless our family that are near and far from us. We thank you for the air that we breathe, Father. We ask you that you be with us today. And we say this thing in the most precious name. We humbly pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Dearly beloved, 